window-based functions. The program window containing the ECDIS screen will be presented at the startup of the ECDIS program. This ECDIS has a graphical interface that allows you to interact directly with objects. You can access respective menus by right-clicking on certain objects. This function works on geographical objects, for example, routes, waypoints, targets, etc. Window Title The following information is displayed in the window title. ECDIS Mode For example, ENC, RCDS, or CMAP Depends on the database and use Type of Display Base, Standard, Extended Standard, or Full Information Display Datum in Use WGS 1984 is in use by default. Type of projection, usually cylindrical. Mercator. The type of workstation, planning, or monitoring. Window title. The following information is displayed in the window title. ECDIS mode. For example, ENC. RCDS, or CMAP. Depends on the database and use. Type of display. Base, standard, extended standard, or full information display. Datum in use. WGS 1984, is in use by default. Type of projection, usually cylindrical. Mercator. The type of workstation, planning, or monitoring. Push button. To apply the new parameters of the function without quitting the dialog box, click the Apply button. To apply the parameters and close the dialog box, press OK. If you want to close the window without saving any changes, click Cancel. External Keyboard an external keyboard is necessary to input alphanumeric data. In general, there are two types of keyboards. One with, and one without backlight. Part of Integrated Navigation System An integrated navigation system, includes different workstations for different tasks. The system can be part of such a system. It can be used as a workstation for the route monitoring, or route planning task. Standalone If the software is not part of an integrated navigation system, the standard installation includes two workstations connected by LAN. The monitoring station, master station, and the planning station, which is used as a backup station. Chart area Aside from the chart that is being displayed, the following information is also directly available once ECDIS has been started. Scale bar North up symbol On chip symbol Console area By default, the console area is located on the right side of the ECDIS. You can move the displayed panel individually, by clicking on it, and moving it to the desired position while keeping the left mouse button pressed. The standard console displays the following information. Ship position GPS or dead reckoning indicator Time Depths Safety contour indicator Ship vectors Route monitoring Alarms panel Tools panels Cursor position Additionally, 
the scale information box, is by default displayed next to the toolbar. Move chart with cursor. The hand cursor can be used to move the chart area. Middle click, hold and drag on the chart area to move the chart display. Move the cursor to one of the chart area borders, and the pan pointer cursor will be visible. When clicking the chart display will move. A double click in the chart, will center the chart on the position of the double click. Input box An input box is used to enter alphanumeric values. To activate it, click inside the input field, and enter the values via the keyboard. Alternatively, use the up and down buttons next to the field. In some cases, you can increase or decrease the values, by simply scrolling the mouse wheel. To delete the value, highlight it, and click delete on the keyboard, or once highlighted, enter the new values directly. Auto loading mode When the auto loading mode is on, the ECTUS automatically loads, and displays the chart with the best scale at the ship's current position, or wherever the chart area is, displaying an ENC cell. The auto load function, does not work with RNCs. To start deactivating, or activating auto loading, right click in the chart. Select chart settings. Choose the special effects tab. And check or uncheck automatic, in the cells loading mode menu. Afterwards, activate the auto centering mode. Right click on the chart area, and press follow the ship. From now on, the chart will always center on the vessel. Finally. To activate the auto loading mode, right click on the chart area, then, select the menu item auto loading. North up. The system, starts in north up, as default settings for chart orientation. The north direction symbol, is shown in the top left corner of the chart area. This mode, is used for most navigation. It allows a clear orientation on large charts, and an easy cooperation between the ECTUS, and paper charts. Course Up For coastal areas, the Course Up mode might be preferred, because it is more easy to cross-check the chart with the surrounding landscape. To change the orientation to Course Up mode, right-click on the chart area, and select Course Up. Note, if the item Course Up is checked, it signifies that the chart orientation is in course up mode. If you uncheck the item, the ECTUS will automatically set the chart orientation to north up mode. True motion. The standard for ship movement on the ECTUS is true motion. The chart area will stay the same, and the ship will move across it. Auto centering. To activate the auto centering function, right click on the chart area, and enable the follow the ship command. Then, click on the auto centering function, and define a centering zone with drag and drop. The chart will automatically move, when the ship leaves the defined centering zone. Center on ship. Click the center on ship icon, in the toolbar. It is a single command, causing the ship to be centered on the display, with the relevant chart area under it. It can be used from any position, to return directly to the vessel. Set a new chart center. You can center the chart freely, by double clicking on any desired position. This position will now become the center of the display. Note, this action, will deactivate the follow the ship function. Move the chart area. The hand cursor, can be used to move the chart area. Middle click. Hold and drag on the chart area, to move the chart display. While using auto centering, the ship will be put back into the center automatically, if the chart is moved too far away from it. Move the cursor to a chart area border and the pan pointer cursor will be visible. Clicking on the chart with this cursor, will move the chart. 
pressing an arrow key, will also move the chart in the desired direction. Both actions, will deactivate the follow the ship function. Set scale. Click the right mouse button anywhere, within the chart area, and a pop-up menu will appear. Click on scale, and a sub-window will appear. Then, select the desired scale. Overscale. If the current scale, is more than two times the size of the original scale, the scale indicator is displayed in yellow, together with the warning, overscale. This warning, is also displayed in the legend panel. If the own ship's position is covered by an ENC, with a larger scale than the current scale, the warning BC, appears in the scale indicator. It indicates that a better chart, is available. Better chart exists is then displayed in the legend panel. Base The base display, contains only the most important information. To activate it, right-click anywhere on the chart, and select Chart Settings. Open the Presentation tab, and press the Base button. Confirm with the OK, or Apply button. Standard. To activate the standard display, open the presentation tab of the chart setting window. Select standard and confirm. The standard display includes classes of objects important for navigation and route planning. Areas, limits of fairways and channels, landmarks, cautionary notes. Another option to display standard is to click on the Set Standard Display button, in the toolbar. All To select all display, right-click anywhere on the chart, and select Chart Settings. Then, click the All button in the Presentation tab, and confirm it with OK, or Apply. All display, contains additional information. Depth spots, ferry crossings, names, depth contours, deeper than the safety contour. Chart legend. Similar to the color differentiation test, diagram 213, the ECTUS chart 1, test data set, may be used as a library of chart symbols. Click on chart handling in the toolbar, to open the chart handling window. Select the tab ZNC, and Chart 1, and double-click on AA4C1XMS, to center the ECTIS on the INT1 library. You can zoom into any of the 13 boxes, to view symbols of that group. Change Chart Symbol Types To change the chart symbol type, right-click anywhere on the chart, open Chart Settings, and select the Presentation tab. You can change the style for points, for example buoys, or areas, line. Click the corresponding arrow in the presentation panel, to open the drop-down menu. Now, you can choose between three styles. Simplified. Paper chart. Paper Pilot Confirm your changes, with Apply, or OK. Two Shades To activate two colors for shallow water, right-click anywhere on the chart, and open Chart Settings. Select the Chart Depths tab. In the Depths panel, check the Use Two Colors for Waters box and click Apply to activate the two depth shades. The chart, will now distinguish between different sea areas, according to the safety contour value. You can change the value with the arrows next to the safety contour field, or by entering the required value with the keyboard. Confirm your change with Apply, or OK. Four Shades To return to the four depth shade setting, Open Chart Settings, and select the Chart Depths tab. 
uncheck the use two colors for water box, and click apply. The chart will now not only distinguish between different sea areas, according to the safety contour value, but also according to the shallow contour and deep contour values. This additional information can be used to better assess the situation. You can change the deep contour and shallow contour values by entering the required value with the keyboard or with the arrows next to the field. Confirm your changes with Apply or OK. Safety Depth Safety Depth is the depth below sea level that is considered to be safe for the ship. It is measured in meters. On the chart, the soundings with the depth value lower than the safety depth are displayed in black, all other soundings are displayed in light gray color. To set the safety depth value, open the chart settings and select the chart depths tab. Change the safety depth value with the arrows next to the field or by entering the required value with the keyboard. Confirm your changes with Apply or OK. Note. For the safety depth value to have any effect, the spot soundings have to be displayed. Guard Zone Every Ectus offers a function to detect dangers from charred objects in front of the vessel. The Guard Zone does this detection of charred dangers. According to the new IHO standards, the chart alerts have been rearranged and divided into three groups. Safety Contour Alerts, Navigational Hazard Alerts, and Special Area Alerts. If the Guard Zone is activated, meaning that the Check Safety Zone and Anchorage checkbox is selected, a Safety Zone will be displayed in front of the vessel, which will trigger alerts, depending on the category of the chart objects. For example, Crossing the safety contour will trigger an alarm, whereas crossing a navigational hazard will trigger an indication or alarm if selected. Chart dangers can also be highlighted in chart area by using the corresponding drop down menu. Set up the zone. To set up the guard zone, open the alerts tab. You can select which angle the cone should have and how many minutes ahead it should reach. The zone color can be changed by clicking the button and selecting the color. Additionally, the highlighting of dangers, objects as well as areas can be changed. Never. On alarm. Always. Note, if the guard zone is not displayed on the screen, detection of dangers function is deactivated, and the system will not trigger alerts anymore. Pick Report To view the cell's properties, or to display information about an object on the chart, right-click on the chart, or on that object, and select Properties. The Pick Report window has the following information tabs. Cell. General information about the selected cell. Areas. List of all areas that cover the selected position, for example restricted areas, caution areas, traffic separation schemes, depth areas, sea areas, etc. Navigation. Information about navigation aids, lights, buoys, etc. More. Additional information about objects on the selected point. Light sector lines. Expand sector lines. History of updates. Displays the list of updates for the cell, or cells, if there are more than one cell under the cursor. Legend. Contains information for any point of the chart display. The legend panel in the console area. Displays information for the ship position only. Loadable chart type. There are two chart formats supported by Ectes 900. Vector and raster. 
The system displays vector charts in a seamless mode, whilst raster charts such as ARCs, from the British Admiralty, are displayed by default in chart-by-chart -chart mode. When raster charts are in use, Ectis runs in RCDS mode. To load the chart handling facility, click on the chart handling icon, located in the toolbar. The chart handling windows, contains two types of charts. ENC, official vector charts. ARCs, official raster charts. To select a chart database, click the tab, and access the functions dedicated to this chart database. Selecting charts. To select the chart type which should be displayed, right click on the chart. When the pop up menu appears, click Other Charts. You can select from the following chart types ENCGB, ENCPM, ENC Chart 1, ENC World, ARCs. You can also use the hotkey option, by pressing Ctrl and F9, to set up chart databases for quick switch. Press F9, to switch directly between the selected chart types. Chart selection from list. You can load a chart, directly from the chart handling dialog. To load the chart handling facility, click on the chart handling icon located in the toolbar. Then, double-click on the chart name, to load the chart. Select Area The Select Area function, allows the user to predefine chart areas, and to select an area to be displayed. To open the Select Chart Area window, please click on the Select Area icon. Then press the button New Area by keyboard. A chart area, contain following informations to be filled up. Name Latitude Longitude Scale Press Center on button, to display the area you have selected. Note A list of chart areas, is created for one type of chart. The list for S57 chart is valid for this type of chart, and cannot be used with RX charts. Set follow ship. The follow ship command, causes the chart to scroll automatically under the ship's motion. To activate the follow ship mode, right click on the chart area, then select the menu item follow the ship. Note. The F3 key activates follow ship. Grid lines. To display the grid, right click anywhere on the chart area, then select chart settings. In the presentation tab, click the grid checkbox, then press the apply button to activate it. The grid feature is only available with vector charts. The appearance depends on the range settings. The grid can be displayed or hidden. Scale bar. The latitude bar is shown on the left side of the chart area. For a chart displayed on a scale smaller than 1 to 80,000, each part has a length of 2 nautical miles. The length of the latitude bar is 10 nautical miles in total. For scales larger than 1 to 80,000, the length of the scale bar is 1 nautical mile. With parts of 0.2 nautical miles each. Fixed range rings. To display the range rings, click the ship properties icon in the toolbar, or right click on the ship's icon, and then select properties.
click the display tab to show the range circles page. Tick the display checkbox to activate range circles. You can set the following values for range circles. Number of circle. Range circle radius. Range circle thickness. You can also change the color of the circle's line. Click on the change color button, then select the desired color. Click OK button to activate it. Chart borders. Chart borders can be displayed or hidden. To display the borders, right click on the chart area and select chart settings. In the presentation tab, toggle the chart borders checkbox. Then confirm with the apply button. The Ecties now displays the borders of every chart. This is especially useful if raster charts are used and the seamless chart display is unactivated. Ship to points, objects. To create a fixed range and bearing from your own ship to any point or object on the chart, click the ship to point range and bearing icon located in the toolbar. This activates the variable range marker, VRM, ring, and the electronic bearing line EBL. The cursor will appear as a cross, with a circle attached to it, plus the actual range and bearing data, measured from the own ship's current position. Move the cursor to the desired object, or point, then click to fix the point. You can move an existing point. Click on it, and move the point, while keeping the mouse button pressed. Release the mouse button, when the point is in the correct position. To change the display of the range, and bearing data, right click on the data field, and select properties. You can change the transparency settings, and the font for the writings. To remove a range and bearing marker, right click on the data field, and select delete. Ship to anchoring point. To create a fixed range and bearing, from the own ship to the desired anchoring position, right click on the ship, to point range and bearing icon, located in the toolbar. The cursor will appear as an anchor, with a circle attached to it, plus, the actual range and bearing data, measured from the ship's current position. Move the cursor to plot an anchoring point on the chart area, and then click to fix its position. You can modify and delete the anchoring point, just like the bearing and range point. From point to point. To create a fixed range and bearing, from point to point, or from an object to another object, click on the point to point range and bearing icon, located in the toolbar. The cursor will appear as a cross until you place the first point. A circle is attached to the second point, and the actual range and bearing data, measured between the two points is displayed. You can reset the point, at the center of the ship's position. Right click on the data field, and select reset to ship origin. Accessing the editor, the editor can be found under tool panels in the console. To access the tool panels, open the options window and the tab console. Scroll down and activate the tool panels. If there is not enough space in the console column and you do not want a second column, you can always deactivate other console panels. Click the apply button to confirm. Click on the editor's tab so that you can access the user object editor. There are two editors. The navigation editor is used for position fixes and other one-time information. It will be recorded in the log book. The user data editor is used for user-made information objects. Arc. To plot an arc with the navigation editor, press the arc button. 
Click on the chart area, to plot the center of the arc, and drag the mouse to the appropriate direction, to define the arc extremity. To move the arc and its center, select the arc, then click on the center, and drag the mouse. To change the arc's range and angle, first select the arc. Then point the cursor to one of the arc's points, until the cursor appears with a cross symbol. Click and drag up to the desired range or angle. To modify an arc, right-click on one of the arcs, and select Properties. In the Object Information window, you can change Position of Center Point Radius of the arc Angles of the arc You can also add additional information, with the Information tab. Click the Apply button, to activate the changes you made. Estimated Position Point To draw an estimated position point on the chart, select the tool point. Click on the position, where you want to draw the point. The point will be labeled with the text TP, and the time it was created. Current information. This tool gives you the possibility to manually insert the force and direction of a current. Select the tool current, click on the chart, and insert the information about force and direction of the current at the time the ship will pass that point. To delete the item, right click on the current arrow and select Delete All Selected, or select the current and press the Delete button on the keyboard. Then press the Yes button to confirm. Range, and Bearing Calculation To measure distance and bearing between two points, you can use the Compass tool. Click on the Compass button, to activate the tool. The cursor appearance will change to a cross. Click and hold on the desired object, or point. Then move the mouse, and drop to the second object. Right-click on the ring, or line, and open Properties to gain access to the following information. Coordinates of the first point, center of the circle. Range and bearing to the second point. Polylines. You can draw lines directly on the chart, with the Polyline tool. To create a polyline, select the tool, by clicking its button. Place the cursor on the chart area on the required position, and click, to put down the first point. Repeat this step, for as many times as needed, to create a complete object. To end the plotting mode, double click to place the final point. Chart Annotation Chart Annotation, allows the user to insert text annotations on the chart. To create a chart annotation, press the chart annotation tool, and click on the desired position in the chart. Note To show the text on the chart, toggle on the button display, in the properties dialog box of the information point. To delete the chart annotation, right click on the current arrow and select Delete All Selected. Alternatively, select the current arrow, and press the Delete button, in the General Tools. Then, press the Yes button to confirm. Layers Data is saved in files, that can be loaded, or unloaded on request. Each file, contains 8 different layers. You can select the layer, you want to store the data in. Several layers and files, can be displayed at once. Each layer, may be shown or hidden. Locked or unlocked. And defined as visible, between editable minimum, and maximum scales.
plotting polylines. You can use the polyline tool to create a line between any number of points. The closed polyline tool can be used to create an area. To create a polyline or closed polyline, select the appropriate plotting tool by clicking its button. Place the cursor on the chart area on the required position and click to put down the first point. Repeat this step for as many times as needed to create a complete object. To end the plotting mode, double click to place the final point. Plotting circles You can use the circle tool to create a circle around a desired point. Select the tool by pressing the circle button. Then, click on the desired point on the chart and drag the mouse until you have reached the required radius. The coordinates of the center point and the radius will be displayed in a box while you create the circle. To specify a circle, select it by clicking on it. Right click on the circle to open a pop up menu and select properties. In the position panel, you can change the coordinates of the center point. You can use the radius box to edit the radius. Confirm your changes with apply. Change object location. You can change the object position on the chart. Select the object and move the cursor on one of its points. When the cursor changes into a hand shape, click and drag the object to its new position. You can modify the points of coordinates using a keyboard. Select the point of an object to be modified. Then right click on it and select coordinates. Or press the OW key on the keyboard. Enter the desired value for both latitude and longitude, and click the OK button, to activate the object. Inserting a point To insert a point in a line, or an area, right click on the line or area, in the desired location, and select Insert Point, to activate the item. Another method is to select the line or area, by moving your mouse to the desired location, then press the I key on the keyboard, to activate the item. Edit Objects You can use the Edit menu for several actions. Undo Reverses the last action. Cut Cuts out the selected object. Paste Plots a cutout object back to the position. Paste to position Clicks on the chart area to plot a cutout object there. Delete all selected. Remove selected objects. Select all object editor. Selects all user objects. Select all alarm objects. Selects all objects with a user alarm. Select all navigation editor. Selects all drawings and line of positions. Connect two polylines. You have the option to connect two polylines. To select two polylines you want to connect, click on each object whilst keeping the control key pressed. Then click the edit button to open the menu and activate the item connect two polylines. This will join the two lines. Modify Object Appearance You can modify the appearance of an object in several ways. First, click on the object you want to change to select it. Then, click on one of the buttons to open the corresponding drop down menu. Select Color. Select the color of the line, or writing. Select line width. Select the width for all lines and borders. Select line style. Choose from a list of styles for all lines. Select pattern. Choose a pattern for areas covered by sectors, circles, or closed poly lines. Select icon. 
choose an icon from a list of different symbol and color combinations. Select font. Select the font, font style, and font size for the annotations. Change settings will apply to the selected objects and the objects placed afterwards. User object alarm. A user object can be linked with an alarm. The Ectis will trigger an alarm if this object enters the guard zone or a route passes it. To set up the alarm, right click on an object and select set alarm. The color of the object changes and it is now marked as a user alarm object. You can delete the alarm by right clicking on the object and clicking delete alarm. User object information. You can add a text about user objects. Right click on an object and select properties to open the object information window. Select the information tab and insert your text in the description box. Confirm with the apply button. The description is displayed when you move the cursor over the object. Delete an object. The first option to delete an object is to select the object and push the button delete selected objects. The second option to delete an object is to select it and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. Confirm any option with the yes button. Delete several objects. To delete several objects at one time, select them by keeping the control key pressed and clicking on them. Open the edit menu and select delete all selected. Confirm the action with the yes button. Deleting a point in a line or an area. To delete a point in a line or an area, right click on the point of the object. Select the item delete point from the pop-up menu. Another method is to move the cursor on the point. Afterwards, press the D key on the keyboard. Cutting a line in two. To cut a line in two, left click on the point of the line where you want to cut it. Use a right click to open the menu box. Click cut point to remove the selected point and cut the line into two parts. Another method is to move the cursor on the point and press the C key on the keyboard. If you cut a line that is part of a closed polyline area, the area will be removed. Manage layers. You can manage the layers with the layer list. To open it, press the select layer button. To change the name of the layer, click on the name once and enter the new name. Each layer has a display priority and a layer list control in which the order of the layers is displayed. To modify the display priority, select a layer's name and drag it up or down the list. To lock a layer, click on the locker on the left side of the list. Objects belonging to that layer aren't editable any longer. To unlock the layer, click on the lock again. To show or hide a layer, click on the I button on the left side of the list. The layer is then invisible and locked. Copy or paste object. You can copy objects from one layer to another. Select the object you want to copy, then activate the item copy from the edit menu. Select the destination layer and activate the edit menu again. Then click paste option. Open file. There are four ways to activate an object editor file. 
To activate a file that is already loaded in the system, use the small arrows next to the file name, until the desired file's name is displayed. You can also view, which files are already loaded in the system. Press the button Select File, to open the File Selection dialog. In the list, the files are displayed on the left. Double click on the file's name, to load it. Press the Load button, and select the file to be loaded. The selected file, which is read from the hard disk, will become the active file. To load several files, that are stored in the same folder simultaneously, open the File Selection dialog. Press the button Load Dear, and select the required folder. All user object files in this folder, will be activated. Close File You can either unload a file, or a set of files belonging to the same directory. Click on Select File, to open the File Selection dialog. To unload a single file, select it from the list of loaded files on the left. Then press Unload, to deactivate this file. To unload a whole folder of files, you can select the folder from the same list. Then click on the Unload button, to deactivate all files in this directory. Save Files When a file is modified, it is not automatically saved on the hard disk. To save the modifications, open the File Management dialog, and select the file. If the file is untitled, or you want to save your changes in a different file, click Save As. You can choose the directory, and the name of the file, and confirm it by pressing Save. If the file is already named, you can directly save the changes in the existing file, by clicking Save. When a directory is selected, all files of that directory can be saved with the Save button. Create a new file To create a new file, open the File Selection dialog first. Then, press the button New. By default, this file is called Untitled. Untitled, is a reserved name, and the file Untitled cannot be saved with that name. A new name has to be entered, to store the newly created Untitled file on a hard disk. Backup Files To backup files on a floppy disk, select a files, or a directory's name, from the list in the File Selection dialog. Press the Backup button. The file, or all files, contained in the selected directory, will be copied onto the floppy. Import Files This ECTIS can convert different types of files with proprietary format, and display the data, as object editor data. To import an external file, open the File Selection dialog. You can choose to import a single file, or a file directory. Click on the corresponding button, and select the desired file or folder, from the list. The ECTIS, is compatible with Statoil data, stored in files with extension, .xy, pipelines, .at, platforms, and .txt, fixture. Establish process To create an LOP, you have to open the bearing line, clearing line window, via the Tools panel. Editors tab Press the LOP, clearing line button in the Navigation Editor panel, and a pop-up window will appear. There are two types of line of position, to choose from. Line of position bearing, degrees, to create a line with a fixed bearing, Line of position range, nautical miles, to create an arc with a fixed range. LOP via bearing To establish an LOP with a fixed bearing, open the LOP dialog. Click on the checkbox for line of position bearing, degrees, and enter the observed bearing to the object into the text box. If necessary, check LOP label, and enter a label that will be displayed on the map. Click OK, to close the dialog. Now, click on the bearing point, 
and drag the line as far as necessary. The time stamp is saved and displayed next to the line, together with the bearing and the label. To add more lines, please repeat the steps. LOP via range With a fixed range to an object, a line of position can be created as an arc. Open the LOP dialog. Click on the checkbox for line of position range, nautical miles, and enter the observed range to the object into the text box. Make sure the bearing checkbox is not active. You can also add a label to this LOP. Click OK to close the dialog. Click on the bearing point. The LOP function will create an arc towards your vessel using the specified range. Label, range, and time stamp are displayed next to the bearing point. LOP with range and bearing. You can also create a direct position fix, if you have the range and bearing to an object. Open the LOP dialog. Click on the checkbox line of position bearing, and enter the bearing. Now click on the second LOP checkbox, and enter the range. Confirm with OK. Click on the bearing object. A line will appear, with the set bearing. A small second line will cross it to mark the position at the specified range. Clearing line In case the text, in the LOP label is NMT, meaning not more than, or NLT, meaning not less than, the line is symbolized as a clearing line. The line will be displayed with an arrow at the end. A clearing line divides the chart into one area that contains hazards, and another one that is safe. It is very useful, to keep the navigator remains in safe water. Parallel, and perpendicular line Parallel and perpendicular lines are only active, if a bearing or clearing line is created. To activate both, parallel and perpendicular line buttons, select a bearing line first, by clicking on it. Then both buttons will be activated. Select the tool. Click on the chart, to place the middle of the line, and drag the mouse to define the length of the line. Event mark. To place an event marker on the old ship track, click the event icon, in the toolbar. The position will be marked with a red box on the chart, which will be stored in the user data active layer. In addition, a comment to the event, may be entered. The object can be moved, by using the drag and drop. And deleted by right clicking. Activate MOB. In case of a man overboard incident, it's always advisable to mark the position where it happened. To activate. Click on the Man Overboard icon, located in the toolbar. The Ectes will give you the option to send an automatic AIS message, about the incident. After you have activated the MOB, the chart will be automatically centered on the MOB point. It shows the time the incident was originated. Every MOB point, is labeled with MOB, and the time it was created. List of alerts The list of alerts is located in the alert box in the console area. All alerts are displayed with red, orange, or yellow indication, depending on their type. 
Silence. To silence all alerts, click on the silence button. The audible signal is stopped for 60 seconds. The speaker symbol of unacknowledged alarms and warnings is crossed out for this time. Optimizing alert conditions. In order to avoid unnecessary alerts, it's recommended to optimize the alert conditions by following the guidelines below. Set up the anti-grounding settings, especially the safety counter, carefully. Establish a reasonable guard zone size, according to your surroundings. Leave cross-track distance limits wide enough, so that collision avoidance maneuvers can be done within the corridor, if the landmarks around your route allow it. Note. Adjust these settings, in accordance with the vessel's conditions, and make sure to not compromise the safety of navigation. Sensor loss. In accordance with the IMO performance standards, a warning will be triggered when a gyro or position system failure occurs. Losing the speed through water input from the log also causes a warning. Route monitoring alerts. The following route alerts can be triggered by the ECTIS. Course change. A warning before reaching a waypoint. It can escalate to an alarm, if not acknowledged. End of route. A warning before reaching the last waypoint. It can escalate to an alarm too, if it is not acknowledged. Backup navigator. If the course change alarm is not acknowledged, it triggers the backup navigator alarm. Cross-track distance out limits. This alarm is triggered if the ship leaves the predefined cross track corridor. Target alerts A target alert is triggered by an AIS or ARPA target. If there is a collision risk, a closest point of approach, time to the closest point of approach alert will sound. If the signal from a target disappears, the lost target alert is triggered. Sensor source basic data. The console area displays basic sensor data, such as position sensor, GPS, speed sensor, log, heading sensor, gyro, wind sensor, which displays true or relative wind, depth indicator, which displays either the depth under the keel the transducer or the surface, radar, and AIS if connected. Sensor Monitor Sensor Monitor is an application that shows the communication status of all sensor ports and manages the input and output for the ICTES. It is launched automatically when the system starts and runs parallel to the ICTES. To access the sensor monitor, click on the Activate SM button. With this application, you can select the type of communication, serial, or Ethernet, configure the input media or serial ports, and check the input and communication status. You may also select the master parameters, and eventually route the data to other receivers. Note: The sensor monitor is a background application during the use of the ICTES. To return to the ICTES, either press the minimize icon, or click on the chart area. Display additional sensors. You can display a whole range of sensor data, in the console panel. To change the displayed sensors, open the options menu, by clicking on the icon. The console can display the following sensor data. GPS or dead reckoning indicator. Status of position sensor. Time. Display of time sensor data. 
Ship position. Display of position sensor data. Ship vectors. Display of heading, course and speed sensor data. Depth indicator. Display of echo sounder sensor data. Drift indicator. Display of heading, course and speed sensor data. Wind indicator. Display of wind sensor data. Load, route. To load an existing route, click on the load on load objects icon, in the toolbar. Click on the bookmark routes, and the list of all saved routes, will be presented. To load a route, check the box located in front of the route name, and click OK, or apply. Unload, route. To unload routes, click on the load, unload objects icon, in the toolbar. Click on the bookmark routes, and a list of all saved routes will be presented. To unload a route, highlight or uncheck the name, and press OK, or apply. If several routes should be unloaded, select all routes, and press unload all. You can also unload a route, via right click on the actual route leg, and clicking unload, in the pop-up window. Lock or unlock a route. Routes can be locked, to prevent them from being changed. If you want to add, or edit any waypoint, you have to unlock a locked route first. To lock or unlock a route, click on the load, unload objects icon, in the toolbar. Click on the lock symbol, to change it to the unlock symbol, and vice versa. Locking and unlocking the root, is also possible in the root plan, and in root properties. Edit root. In order to edit a root, it must be loaded, and unlocked first. After loading the root, right click on root plan in the toolbar, and the root plan table will appear. Another option, is to right click, on one of the legs of the displayed route. Afterwards, click route plan, in the pop-up window. Save route. Once a new route has been created and finished, a pop-up dialog box appears, where you can enter the route name. A combination of date and UTC time, will appear as a default name. You can enter a root name, and click OK. The root is saved and recorded, in the root database. Duplicate root. To duplicate a root, open the load, unload window. Select the root you want to duplicate, and press the save as button. When the Save as pop-up window appears, enter the new root name, and click Save. Sort Roots To sort a root, click the Load on Load Objects button in the toolbar, to open the menu. Double-click the column labeled Status Name. The list of routes may be sorted, either ascending or descending. After creation, the routes are saved in the routes folder. You can create subfolders, for example for each voyage, to have a better overview of your routes. Select the main folder, and click on create new folder. Enter the folder name, and confirm with OK. You can view the routes in each folder, by selecting the folder. Roots can be moved within the folders. Select the route you want to remove from the list, and drag it to the destination folder. Import routes. 
To import a route, click the Load Unload button, in the toolbar. Press Import, and select the location of the file. The ECTIs can import routes in different formats. The imported routes, are stored in the active folder. Note. Routes are stored in ECTIs, using WGS84 datum. When a route is imported, it is important to select the datum of the route creation. If the datum is not selected correctly, the waypoints are shifted. In this case, you should verify and adjust the waypoint position manually. Reverse route. You can reverse a route, so that the last waypoint, will become the first one. Right click on a leg of the route, to open a pop-up menu. Select Reverse. In the Route Name window, enter a new name, for the reversed route. This route will replace the previous one, on the chart. Both routes will be accessible, in the Load Unload menu. Note. If you have made any unsaved changes to the original route, these will not be saved. If you want to save the reversed route, use Save As. Split Route An existing route, can be split into two parts at any leg. To do so, right-click on the leg, where you want to cut the route into two parts. Select Split from the pop-up menu. The route is split into two parts. Both parts are saved, but the original route is removed. Note. If you split a route, at the first or last leg, the remaining single waypoint, will be deleted. If you want to keep the original route, use the Save As function, before splitting. Merge Route, or Add Route. Open the Route Plan window, in order to merge two or more routes. Right-click on the route, that you want as a first part, and select Route Plan. The other routes, will always be added at the last waypoint. Press Add Route, to open the Select Route window. Choose the route you want to add from the list, and confirm with OK. The waypoints of this route, are now added, at the end of the first route. If you want to add a third route, it will be added at the end of the second one. Default Options To view or change route parameters, click on the Options icon, in the toolbar. Then, select the Route Bookmark. There are several default settings, that can be changed. Type of Leg Line Either Great Circle, or Rum Line Sailing, as default. Turning Radius Default Turning Radius Value, for Route Creation. Speed Default Speed Value, for Route Creation. Cross Track Distance Limit Default Distance, for the XTD Corridor. Waypoint Arrival Distance Default Distance, for Waypoint Arrival. If you change these settings, the new values will be used, for every new route that is created afterwards. Waypoint Parameters Open the Route Plan window, by right-clicking on the icon. Here, you can see the parameters that have been set before. Leg Rum Line, or Great Circle, for this leg. Radius Turning Radius at this waypoint. XTD Cross Track Distance from this waypoint. All values for the root legs, originate from the waypoint. For example, the XTD value for waypoint 1, specifies the quarter from waypoint 1, to waypoint 2. Create new waypoint. To create a new waypoint, for a completely new route, click on the new route button, in the toolbar. Choose the position for your first waypoint, and click on the chart. The first waypoint is created, and labeled WP001. The cursor changes to a waypoint symbol, with an information box next to it. This box displays information, about the next waypoint, if it would be placed on the current cursor position. It shows the distance from the last waypoint, the bearing to the waypoint, 
the position, and the total length of the root. You can create as many waypoints as necessary, for the root. If you want to place the last waypoint, double click on the position. The root name window will open. You can enter a name for the root, and the destination. Stop the waypoint and root creation, with OK. Change waypoint. You can change the position of any waypoint, in graphic mode. Load, and unlock the root. To move a waypoint on the chart, click on the required waypoint. A yellow circle will mark the selection. Now hold the mouse button, and then drag the waypoint to the desired position. Undo. In case of a mistake, it is possible to go back one step, with the undo function. Right click on a leg of the root, to open the pop-up menu. Select the item undo. The last modification will be undone. You can use this function several times, to undo changes that have been done before. ETA, Information Having loaded a root, the root plan window displays general information, about the current voyage. This is shown in the distance time panel. Distance to go. Distance up to the final waypoint. Fixed value for the route. Start date and time. The time the route was activated. TTG. Time to go, to the final waypoint. ETA. Expected time of arrival, at the final waypoint. ETA calculator. The route plan window, can also be used to calculate ETA values. Select plan speed, to use your own input, for the calculation. You can change start date and time. Click in the box, and change the value with the keyboard. Click on the leg speed over ground boxes, and enter the required speed values, for each waypoint. The ETA and TTG values will be calculated, and a complete schedule can be created. Click the Print Route Plan button, to open the schedule. Press File, and select Print, to print out a route schedule. Start Route Check In order to check a route, this route must be loaded first. You can use the Check Route function, to check a route against all dangers of the ENC database, including manually updated objects, and user-defined dangers. Right-click on the root, and select Check Route. The Route Check window will open. If there is no danger at all, the window bar will display, Route is safe. Otherwise, all possible dangers will be listed. Filter Adjustment The ship's draft, and air draft, are checked against all risks inside the safety zone when the check route function is activated. You can adjust the safety depth, and safety height, that are used for the check. Click on settings, and enter the required values in the boxes. Close with OK. The route check will be performed again, with the new values. Apart from these two values, there is no possibility to configure the route check. It will always check the safety zone, against all kinds of areas, for example caution areas and restricted areas, as well as objects, for example beacons, and safety contour. Besides chart alerts, the route is also checked with regards to geometric correctness. This means, that the route will be checked against the ship parameters, to establish whether it is possible for this vessel, to make this turn. Geometric Errors After a route check, the route check window may display geometric errors. If all ship parameters have been entered correctly in the ECTES, a geometric error means that the vessel cannot sail the route, without leaving the safety zone between the XTD limits. The message wrong geometry, waypoint, leg is too short for selected radius, is displayed. To fix this, you need to modify the waypoint.
Afterwards, check the route again. Activate planned route. First, load the required route to the ECTES using the load or onload window. Right click on a leg of the route and select activate route name. The route will be checked before it is activated. When a route is activated, the route monitoring function starts automatically. The ECTES continuously calculates and displays data about a vessel's approach to the next waypoint. Back to track function. This function allows to create a new route to return to an activated route after the ship had to deviate from the original route. The original route is not deleted. Move the mouse cursor to the position in which you plan to return and right click. Select back to track. The ECTES will add a back to track waypoint at this position and change to graphic waypoint creation mode. Now you can create as many waypoints as needed to create a route which goes back to the original track. Note The route needs to be checked and activated normally, therefore, it needs to be geometrically correct and free of dangers. Deactivate route To modify a route, it's necessary to deactivate it and then unlock the route before editing. To deactivate a route, right click on one leg and select deactivate route name. Confirm the action with the Yes button in the pop up dialog. If you activate a route while another is already active, the previous route will automatically be deactivated. When the ship reaches the last waypoint of a route, the end of track alert will be triggered and the route deactivated. Route and cross track distance. The course line is displayed as a dotted line between the waypoints. If there is a course change big enough, at one waypoint, a curved turn line will be added. Size and shape depending on the settings and ship parameters. It starts at the wheelover point and continues to the end of turn point. In case the ship is not exactly on the course line, the wheelover point is extended into the wheelover line. Alongside the route, two dotted lines display the cross-track distance settings and form a corridor in which the ship should sail. The cross-track distance value can be set for each leg of the route. It starts at the end of turn point of the previous course change and ends at the next one. The cross-track distance lines cannot be disabled directly, but the value can be set to zero and the alarm can be turned off. Monitoring route data. The console display on the right side of the ECTES can be used to show various information about the active route. The route monitoring panel displays the active waypoint with its name, bearing, and range, time to go to the waypoint, and estimated time of arrival at the waypoint. Additionally, it shows the current cross track distance, and the next leg's range, and bearing. Note. While on a great circle route leg, the displayed bearing to the active waypoint will change with the position of the ship following the great circle to the active waypoint. Setting waypoint approach indications To set the values for the early course change indication and for course change indication, open the options window and select the route tab. In the route alerts panel, the time for the early course change indication can be set between 1 and 6 minutes. The time for the course change indication can be set between 30 and 60 seconds using the text box or the arrows on the right side. Additionally, the last waypoint arrival time is setting up the time when the end of route warning is triggered. Fixed ETA function To set a fixed ETA at a waypoint, for example a pilot station, and calculate the speed needed to reach the selected waypoint in time, the fixed TTA function can be used. Right click on the selected waypoint and open properties. 
The fixed ETA function parameters panel has two text boxes, for the required date and time. Tick fixed ETA, and enter the required values. The name, the ETA, and the required speed, appears in the console panel. Predictor The predictor functionality, allows to display the future position of the ship. It is a navigational aid, to be used for continuous dynamic ship position prediction, during turns. It calculates the ship's position during a turn, using most recent historical data. Ship position Speed over ground Course over ground Heading Rate of turn, and rate of turn acceleration To enable the predictor, open the target prediction menu, and toggle the box, Use Own Vector Predictor. Pressing Settings, allows to change Maximum Ship Speed Maximum Turn Rate Prediction Duration Time to Reach Rate of Turn The values are according to the ship's parameters, and user requirements. Enable track recording. To enable a past track recording, open the ship's properties, select the track tab, and check the box show active track. In this menu, you can set the interval for the past positions, that will be saved as single points, and then form the past track. Additionally, a position point can be added whenever the ship changes the course more than the set value to control the track recording more efficiently. Checkbox, add a point when the ship's course changes more than, and, enter a value in degree, in order to control the track recording more efficiently, when the course changes. Disable and save past tracks. To disable a past track, open the ship's properties, select the track tab, and, uncheck the box show active track. Saving tracks. To save a selected track. Right click on the track and select the properties item from the list. Select the save tab and enter the desired track name, date, and time. A pop up window will ask you to enter a name for the new track. If you want to save the track, enter a name and press save track. Note the save track can be downloaded anytime for reuse. Load, or unload tracks. To load, or unload routes or tracks, click the Load, Unload Objects icon. The list of tracks, may be sorted in ascending, or descending order. Use the Create New Folders button, to arrange and group the tracks, in specific folders. Loading a track. To load a track, select the track name. Tick on the checkbox and the Apply button. To center the selected track on the chart, select the track name, and click the Localize button. Note To load multiple tracks, tick on multiple checkboxes of the desired tracks, and click the OK or Apply buttons. Unloading tracks To unload a tracks, Select one or more tracks, from the list displayed, by either clicking on the name, or, in the checkbox, and then click either, OK, or Apply. To remove all displayed tracks from the chart, click the, Unload All button. The past track that is currently created by a moving vessel, will not be deleted, or removed from the chart. A selected track, can be deleted, with the Delete button. To permanently delete the track, the pop-up dialog has to be confirmed by pressing yes. Open and close chart handling. To view and amend the system chart library, click on the chart handling icon. This function allows the user to list and update the charts installed in the chart library, to install new charts, and to delete charts from the library. To close it, Simply click on the close button or the X. Installing a chart collection. 
To install a whole chart collection from a CD, first press the install button to open the ENC installation wizard. Choose install whole charts collection, base, and update cells, from CD, and proceed by clicking next. After the charts are installed, Ectis tries to find updates of the charts on the same media. If the updates are found, and have a correct sequence, Ectis automatically applies the update to the charts. The window will display all newly installed charts, and updates. Press finish to return to the chart handling window. Delete charts. To remove charts, select them in the left part of the chart handling window. Multiple selection can be achieved, by holding the control key, while selecting the desired ENCs. Press the delete charts button in the install frame. Confirm the action in the pop-up window, to delete the selected charts. Chart Update Summary Pressing Display Updates, opens a summary of chart updates. This function displays the list of cells of the ENC database, which have been updated, and the list of updates applied to each cell. The list can be sorted by name, or position, by clicking on the column title. Select a cell in the left panel, and all update sessions applied to this cell are listed in the right panel. A green circle in front of the update shows, that information about this update is available. This makes it possible to review this update. A red icon is used, when update details are not available. If an update with available details is selected, the list of updated objects is displayed in the lower part of the dialog. Double click on one object to center the chart on the object. Selecting at least one object, enables the Highlight Selected Objects button, to mark the objects on the chart. Press the button before update, to see the original chart, before the update has been applied. And the button after update, to see the chart, after it has been applied. Additionally, the row history can be selected, to display a list of all applied update sessions. Selecting one session, will expand the list of cells updated during the session. A bold chart, cell, or session name, indicates that not all updates, have been reviewed yet. Create Point Objects To create a point object, right-click on the chart on the appropriate position, and activate the menu Manual Update. Click on Point Objects and select the type of object you want to insert from the list below. The coordinates are set to the position of the cursor, at the time the menu was activated. Click Add Point, to enter the coordinates for a point, or by cursor, to select the position on the chart. To select another position on the chart, click on the By Cursor button, and then on the respective chart position. After the correct position, and object have been selected, press Insert to add the manual chart update. Create Line, or Area Objects To create a line or area object, click on the Line and Area Objects button. Select the type of line, or area you want to insert from the list. Click Add Point, to enter the coordinates for a point, or by cursor, to select the position on the chart. Each line or area needs at least three coordinates to be defined correctly. After the correct positions and object have been selected, press Insert to add the manual chart update. Delete specific object. To delete an object, right-click on the point object or on one component of the line or area object, and activate the manual update menu. Depending on the type of object to be deleted, click either the point objects, or line and area objects button. Select the object from the upper list, and press delete, to remove it. Predefined chart objects, 
are also listed as line and area objects with the mark cell, and can be deleted too. They will not disappear, but be crossed out and can be restored, by pressing delete again. Note. Manual chart updates are deleted permanently, and cannot be restored. Delete all manual updates. You can also remove all manual updates stored in a cell, in just one operation. Activate the manual update menu, and click the delete all updates button. To delete every manual chart update in the selected cell, confirm the pop-up dialog by pressing yes. This deletes point objects, as well as line and area objects, but will not change the predefined chart objects. Display a logbook. The 24 hours logbook, records both, navigational events, and system events. It's also possible, for the navigator to make manual entries in the logbook. Select the logbook tool in the toolbar, to display the logbook window. The entries, of the current 24 hours logbook, are listed. Each entry in the logbook, is defined by the following attributes. Time, UTC. Position, Latitude, and Longitude. Event Type. Comment, including other parameters, depending on the event type. COG, Course Over Ground. SOG, Speed Over Ground. HDG, Heading. SDW, Speed Through Water. Range. Bearing. To adjust the logbook settings, click on the Settings button. A window will open, where you can adjust, how data is sent to the Voyage Data Recorder. Please note, that the length of recording, is adjustable with the automatic deletion function, but the logbook will be stored for at least 90 days. Logbook Events The logbook stores general information in specific intervals, as well as additional events whenever they happen. Logbook items to be stored in intervals. Ship's position, heading, and speed. Status of main alarms. Ship's name, call sign, dimensions, and shape. GPS sensor location. Type, scale, and description, of the chart in use. Position on the screen, and chart display parameters. User made objects. ARPA and AIS targets, within set range. Logbook items, to be stored as events. Route creation. Route activation, and deactivation. Waypoint activation. Manual events. Alarm events. Target events. Voyage record. The voyage record stores the position, speed, and course of the ship every two hours. This logbook is stored for half a year, and is copy protected, so it cannot be deleted. To display the voyage record, click the logbook button, press load, and select the file called month, day, year, v3.lgf. Replay To replay a recording, you have to load a recorded logbook, as described in the previous chapters. Once this is done, you enter the replay viewer by clicking on the replay button in the logbook window. To start the replay, click on the replay button symbol. By default, the start time for replays is the time of the first logbook entry. To suspend a replay, click the suspend button. Note: The replay function must be used carefully, preferably only when the ship is at port. During replay, all navigation functions are deactivated, the ship is no longer monitored, and the logbook recording is suspended. Docking mode The docking mode, displays four historical positions of the ship, and speed vectors at the bow, and stern of the vessel. Open the target prediction window, and check the box docking mode, to activate the mode. A black vector at the bow and stern, displays the precise movement of the ship. Four dotted ship icons, are displayed to show the exact pass positions. 
The text box history shape time step can be changed between 3 and 15 seconds to change the time between the current vessel and the past positions. The vector predictor and the ship to anchoring point tools can be of additional help. Parallel lines To create a parallel index, right click on an existing route. In the pop up menu, select the option Parallel Index. Select the endpoint for your index line and click there. Drag the mouse until the line has the required length. You can modify both points of the line by selecting the line and then dragging the point to the correct location. The lines display the distance to the course line and the time it was created. Target Prediction To predict the position of any targets and the own ship, open the Target Prediction menu. The Linear Predictor panel has a slide control to change the prediction time. It can be changed from 0, current position of the vessel and all targets, to 60 minutes in advance. Note This is only a linear prediction. Course changes are not considered. Ship to Anchoring Point Tool To monitor how the vessel moves, the Ship to Anchoring Point Tool can be used. Right click on the Conning to Point Tool to open the Anchoring Tool. An anchor symbol will appear at the cursor and can be placed on the required chart position. A bearing line and range circle will be displayed. A small box next to the anchor symbol will show the distance between bow and anchor point, the true and the relative bearing to it. Right click on the box to change the transparency of the text box or delete the anchor point. Installation and activation To activate the AIO, open the chart settings and select the tab supplementary layers. Toggle the box Admiralty information overlay to display the AIO. The Admiralty Information Overlay is a service that overlays ENCs with worldwide Admiralty temporary and preliminary notices to mariners. A permit is necessary to install it and display it in chart handling in the same way as other cells. You can install it the same way as other charts. It will be displayed in the chart handling window in the ENC GB tab. AIO Information to display the AIO information, right-click on a red area on the chart, to pick a report. Select the Areas tab, and expand the preliminary notice, or temporary notice you want to read, by clicking the plus button. The affected ENC, is listed, and the text of the notice is displayed. Tide Stations Clicking on the Tide Stations button, will display the available tide stations in the area. A right click on the activated button opens the tide stations for the area window. There, you can choose to use BA Total Tide if Total Tide SW is installed, Mare's Tide, or Norwegian HO Tide. The list of available tide stations will be displayed too. Mare's Tide Icons The small tide icon displays the tide level at the current chart time in red. The black arrows indicate rising or falling tide. A right click on the tide icon opens the tide graph and highlights the selected tide station. You can also open a tide graph by double clicking on the name of a station in the tide station list. Voyage Optimization To access the voyage optimization, right click on the route and activate the respective menu. Various navigational and commercial parameters can be inserted for a better voyage performance. Performance and voyage report can be printed. Port list Clicking on the port list button will display the available ports in the area. A right click on the button opens the port list window. Here, all stored ports are listed and can be sorted by name, country, or time zone. You can select a country from the drop-down menu, to display all ports of that country. Double-clicking on the name of a port, centers the chart on that port. A right-click on the chart symbol for ports, opens the port information.